Hey guys, it's Tom Box here. Welcome to MST.TV. Now, if you click this video, that means A, you're subscribed to MST.TV, B, you're looking for a ruling question answered, or C, you're arguing with your friend right now and you're pulling this video up just so that you can back your claims. Good argument there. But if you haven't subscribed to MST.TV and you haven't checked out our stuff, please do so. Click the subscription button down below and hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the fun stuff. I usually cover stuff that are closer to what's relevant now so maybe you'll find a lot of stuff that's applicable but this time we're gonna be doing rulings and because i was recently a ycs judge at niagara falls you guys asked me a lot of questions so i've got a lot of uh, frequently asked questions that you guys put together for me well i kind of put together myself and uh, i'm gonna pass it back to you guys and some of them were pretty basic some of them really challenged my knowledge on the small intricacies and I got some of them wrong because I didn't read it properly and I need to correct myself and this is actually one of the takeaways of why one event's ruling may not directly apply to another event's ruling. You have to stick with the most applicable one. Some people like to argue that hey they ruled it like that at that event, they ruled X at that event, why aren't you ruling it the same way? Well we are not at that event and we're at this event and we're ruling it this way. So that being said it just makes a bad argument saying if they ruled it wrong at that event that doesn't mean that they're gonna rule it wrong again at this event so just stay up to date with the rulings that's pretty good so what do we have for you guys today we have Danko Seka versus Red Reboot that's a very interesting case because it really tests the conjunctional knowledge and then we have evenly matched versus Sky Striker the application of making effect on your player we have Thunder Dragon versus Revival cards we have the card text for of uh, summonable monsters and then we have condemned witch TCG versus OCG car text differences and then we also have link Karibo versus Boral sword or Boral um, low dragon so that would be the difference between a quick effect and a trigger effect so that's the topics that we're going to cover today and I'm going to talk about it in a more judge like fashion where I'm going to explain the situation uh, and we're going to talk about the reason why certain things are ruled a certain way. And I'll also read the card text as well. Alright, let's get into this. So the first situation is going to be Denko Seka versus Red Reboot. How does this even happen? Is it even a legitimate situation that is going to happen in the competitive scene? The answer is yes. How does it happen? Well, Thunder Dragon versus Altergeist is the most likely case where this is going to happen. This is probably going to be a Game 2 situation where you side it in the Red Reboot so you can play your Thunder Dragon stuff without your opponent kind of wrecking your board. And you summon out, well, the Denko Seka. Your opponent activates impermanence to turn it off so that they can actually set stuff and uh, summon out their marionette and get cards but then you have red reboot and you red reboot the impermanent so both of these cards were activated from hand and that's the most legitimate case of this type so let's read over the card text and we'll explain every little bit here thunder dragons they run denko seka so it's pretty common uh, to see this happen i'll give you guys an updated profile because denko is amazing but card text wise we have cannot be special summoned while you control no set spell traps, neither players can set spell traps, nor activate spell trap cards that are set on the field. So that's the continuous effect of Denko Seka. Red Reboot states, now there's a bit of a longer paragraph here, when your opponent activates a trap card, negate the activation, and if you do, set their card face down. Then, they can set one trap directly from their deck. For the rest of the turn after this card resolves, your opponent cannot activate trap cards. You can activate this card from your hand by paying half your life points there you go so the thing that we really have to pay attention to is red reboot red reboots conjunctions then goes back it's pretty self-explanatory just that your opponent cannot set cards so is your opponent or are you even allowed to use red reboot well the answer is yes uh, mainly because the conjunctions so we're gonna read over this again but we're gonna slow it down while explaining if Denko Seka was on the field. So when your opponent activates a trap card, negate the activation, that's part A. And if you do, anything after this is part B, set that card face down. Now part A can resolve without part B because it's and if you do. And if you do is the conjunction where part A must happen and then part B will happen, but they happen at the exact same time. This is the simultaneous conjunction, but A must happen for B to happen. 
but it's at the same time, so you won't miss timing on various things. It's the word and conjunction where both must happen. Since it's and if you do, that conjunction makes it so that setting that card face down is not necessarily like mandatory. And because of that, uh, the card can't get set face down. Well, since it's still got played, it will be sent to the graveyard. And then there's the other conjunction that's here, then. Now then needs the first part to happen properly before you can even do this. It's not simultaneous, but it is part of the same effect. They can set one trap card from directly from their deck. Well, of, co of course they can't even set that trap anymore because Dango Sack is already on the field and the conjunction was also, more importantly, miss. So you won't even get to that point where you get to set one trap directly from the deck. So in any case, if you activate Red Reboot, your opponent will not be able to reset the card. In fact, that card will just be sent to the graveyard just by, it's like the game's last ditch mechanic. If they can't deal with a, th a card, they throw it into the graveyard. So. That's kind of how it works. Think about excavation and adding cards to hand. When you activate a card that you can't add to hand and your opponent has a card that freezes card adding, what happens to that card? Well, you throw it to the graveyard. It's the common good old pot of duality versus Thunder King and call the haunted. So that's the red reboot stuff. So yeah, for once red reboot does not re reset a card. Now I don't want to give a huge shout out to my most recent Patreons. If you guys want to support this channel, like Patreon Pat, which I met at Niagara Falls. Huge shout outs to you guys. Um, well, you can check out the Patreon link down in the description below. Any support helps. I'm trying to work out a better Patreon program for you guys. Aside from just getting proxies from you, I'm really trying to push out more for you guys. But uh, that's in the works. Just giving you guys a heads up if you guys like the stuff I do here. Well, you can check out the Patreon link down in the description below. And let's move on to the next few rulings. So Link Rebo is the second most asked question at the event because I'm guessing there's Alter Geist and Thunder Dragons, they both run the card. That being said, the interaction we're going to be talking about is going to be with the Boral Load Dragon for the first one. The second one doesn't exactly matter what monster it is, but the first one is in regards to simultaneous effect going on chain and the other one is actually going to be about replays and how replays actually work. Not a lot of people know how it works because it never really mattered until this point. So we're going to talk about this. So for the first one here, Link Arriba was already, already on the field and then we have a Borlo Dragon. The question that people ask me is whether or not Borlo Dragon can use its effect to reduce attack to block Link Arriba from going into his chain using turn player priority. You usually get the first activation. And the answer to that is no, you cannot stop Link Karibo using that effect uh, because of how chains work, how trigger effects and quick effects work. So reading the card effect of Borlo Dragon, uh, once per turn quick effect, you can target one face of monster on the field, it loses 500 attack and defense, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this effects activation. Okay, that's cool. So it's blocking off any further activation and usually a turn player gets the first quick effect. However, Link Rebo's uh, attack reduction effect is not a quick effect. It is a optional trigger. So when an opponent's monster declares an attack, colon, you can tribute this card, semicolon, which is activation cost, uh, change that monster, that opponent's monster attack to zero until the end of the turn. Um, well, that being said, how does this really work out well to reiterate and give you guys a quick review uh trigger effects will always apply first it, the chains usually builds like this you have all the option sorry all the mandatory turn player trigger all the mandatory uh opposing uh players mandatory triggers and then you have the turn players optional triggers and the opposing players optional triggers and then you stack quick effects on top of that so does that make sense since the link rebo effect is an optional trigger, the optional trigger will apply first. You can't just take away the timing for your opponent to use their effect uh, just because you have turn player priority because quick effects are applied after the trigger effects have gone through and the optional trigger of Link Karibo will go through before you get to use your Boral Load or your Boral Sword to force it to be stuck on the field. Unless your opponent like passes priority, uh, yeah, they are guaranteed to be able to use that uh, Link Karibo. So. There you have it. So that is a simultaneous effect goes on chain ruling for Link Rebo versus Boral series monsters. Now the second uh, ruling is regarding 
What if Link Rebo was in the graveyard and uh, your opponent declares an attack and then you use Link Rebo? Can Link Rebo activate its effect to reduce the monster's attack to zero? And the answer to that is no, you cannot. And this is strictly because how replays are ruled. And this is something that all players, I guess, now should be aware of because Link Rebo is such a frequently played card. How does it work? Well, in replays, this is something I actually made a mistake on, so I do apologize for anyone, and hopefully it gets ruled correctly at your future events. That's that's all I can really say. But how does this work? Well, the case, it is not considered as another attack declaration, and because it is no longer attack declaration, you cannot trigger that Link Karibo. So in the example, say I have a Luster Dragon attacking into a level one token, the player with the Link Rebo uh, activates it from the graveyard, tributing that level 1 token, summons out the Link Rebo, and then a replay occurs. In that replay, the Luster Dragon controller decides to reselect the attack target to Link Rebo. Link Rebo cannot activate because of the fact that it is not a new attack declaration. You can actually look this up, the source is in the wiki, you can just look up the wiki and then just look up, hey replays and uh, it will be there. So in other words, what does this mean? Cards like Mirror Force can't be activated, cards like Dimensional Prison can't be activated, anything that requires an attack declaration cannot be activated because it is technically now the battle step. It is no longer the attack declaration. Although attack declaration is kind of part of it, but it is just the generic battle step at this point. So that's the Link Rebo rulings. So the other ruling here is Evenly Match versus Sky Striker Ace Ray in the Graveyard. I get that she's in the Graveyard, but what happens when your extra uh, deck monster in the extra monster zone gets, well, banished? And what happens then? Well, let me tell you this. Sky Striker Ace Ray will not activate. I may have said something else otherwise, but um, it's because I didn't read the card carefully. And Evenly Match applies the effect on the player and that's key here because the only way to trigger sky striker ace ray in the graveyard is while this card is in your graveyard if a face up sky striker ace link monster you control is destroyed by battle or leaves the effect because of an opponent's card effect you can special summon this card the sad part is the opponent's card effect part the thing about evenly match is it applies an action towards a player and anything that that player does in that forced action is not considered by the card effect anymore. The card effect is that you must meet a condition of some sort, but the um, the uh, then therefore it's not a direct relation to the card effect, and therefore Ray won't activate because the trigger was not met. Uh, it's much like evenly match and share the pain. They have very similar wording where it makes your opponent do something evenly match makes it so that if your opponent controls more cards than you do, you can make your opponent banish cards from their field face down so they control the same number of cards you do, and that's what they make them do. Uh, that's ultimately the effect, uh, but it's not, it's basically collateral damage if you want to think about it that way. This is kind of be the more confusing side of Yu-Gi-Oh because this isn't exactly the most easy stuff for most people to comprehend because oh but this still it's a card that's making me do it yeah it's still not the same thing it's much like a trickstar life stage versus the waking the dragon situation waking the dragon used to activate before but then it was clarified that light stage makes your opponent either activate the card or makes your opponent send it to the graveyard your opponent must send it to the graveyard therefore it's an action put upon them to send it to the graveyard and therefore waking the dragon well, does not trigger because it was not well sent there uh, by your opponent's card effect anymore apparently so herald of the abyss is another card that kind of follows the same suit the wording is matching to the light stage so pay 1500 life points declare one monster type and attribute and your opponent must send one face up uh monster with the declared type and attribute from their field to the graveyard so yeah herald of the abyss and light stage they're very similar much like uh evenly match is similar to share the pain where share the pain makes your opponent tribute a monster for no effect and it's an action applied to the player so 
If you're still confused about it, I don't blame you because these particular effects are pretty kind of advanced into Yu-Gi-Oh! now and it's only coming up more and more recently due to the fact that we have really strong cards that are meta relevant that are just pushing these effects forward. And time for a review on summoning conditions and, well, Nomi versus Semi-Nomi monsters. Semi-Nomi monsters, we know them as the ones that have a specific summoning condition and after you've summoned them properly, you can special summon them from any other location once they have been summoned successfully. Thunder Dragons aren't that. Thunder Dragons are considered Nomis. Now consider the difference between a Nomi and a Semi-Nomi. Back then, in old school Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, the difference between the two was how it was worded. The first one was, can only be special summon. That would be a Semi-Nomi, where if you summoned it properly once, you can summon it from anywhere else. And a Nomi would be, cannot be special summoned except by this. That's when it's completely locked in. However, that wording has completely changed now. It's much more clear in my opinion, and that is a semi-nomi will now state uh, must first be special summoned by condition X, and once you've uh, first summoned it with condition X, I guess now it's all good, you can special summon it with whatever method you want. However, nomis now just say must be summoned with this, and that is all. It doesn't say first, the word first is very important because it basically declares whether or not you can revive it or not. So Thunder Dragons, they state this, they must be either fusion summoned or special summoned with X. So they are known as a Nomi with two summoning conditions and you cannot revive these cards. Thunder Dragon players cannot use the Thunder Dragon Hawk to revive it and that's, that's that was seen a lot and I hope you guys catch on and don't let someone soft cheat you in that way. Well, it would be like a complete illegal play once they do that. So luckily, because the Thunder Dragon Hawk does not target, you just give them a different monster to summon out. It doesn't target, so it's all good. On the other hand, I've seen people kind of like completely overlook this and they lost a match because of it. Uh, this was one of the matches in time where uh, an opposing player with a Sky Striker deck tried to chump block for game because this was in time. They dealt the 1500 with Hayate, and the Hayate took a hit, but then that wasn't enough damage, and then you needed to block another hit. But that being said, he was using Shark Cannon to hopefully block that hit. However, he targeted the Thunder Dragon Colossus instead of any of the other monster. And because of that moment, he was about to get the monster. The Thunder Dragon player was handing it to him. Uh, because it was in time, I was monitoring the match. And I was like, hold on, the target has been selected. And unfortunately, the monster is now banished because it cannot be special summoned back onto the field due to the fact that it does not say it must first be special summoned. It is It must be fusion summoned or special summoned during a turn a Thunder Monster's effect was activated in hand and then tribute a Thunder effect monster so yeah, with all that being said, knowing your summoning condition is very, very important. Knowing what's the limitation of your monster. Like Geyseris from the Gladiator B series, uh, it states must first be special summoned. Same with Heraclinos, must first be special summoned. Those ones, yeah, you can revive them. But uh, Thunder Dragon Colossus, not so much. Neither can Titan. And for the final ruling here, although it's not as relevant right now, this one's probably going to be a temporary thing and before Konami fixes it, it's going to be Condemned Witch. Condemned Witch, in terms of her card text, uh, it's quite interesting uh, because when this card is normal summoned, you can add one forbidden quick play spell from the deck to your hand. Uh, that's the only thing I really want to focus on because it does not state except for Forbidden Graveyard, whereas in OCG, you cannot search Forbidden Graveyard due to the fact that the card names don't really match, and due to the fact that this is a more of a direct translation, um, uh, I think one of those cards is either going to be errated. Either Condemned Witch is going to get errated in the future, where it's going to include except for Forbidden Graveyard, or Forbidden Graveyard is going to have a name change where it does not include the name Forbidden it's in its name. Because the OCG names of uh, Forbidden Chalice, Lance, and all those do not share anything in common with the Forbidden Graveyard. So yeah, that's something to know. Because right now, our card does not state that um, Forbidden Graveyard can't be searched. Forbidden Graveyard is one of those cards that you definitely, yeah, you can search. And uh, during 
one of our judge tournaments, uh, I was educated on that, saying until there is a print of Forbidden Graveyard that uh, is not Forbidden Graveyard, uh, that's the only time when the rulings will be updated for that. So, yeah, and it's, in other words, if a card has like text that's not really representing what it's supposed to do in OCG, eventually something will change and update that or whether or not it's going to be an errata in the card name uh, or it's going to be the errata in the card text. So you know, it really depends on which direction is going, but that is something to note. And on that note, I guess that's all the rulings I have for you guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit me up with a thumbs up. If you guys want to see more stuff from MST.TV, hit that subscribe button. Check out our other videos. And, you know, if you want to support me, you go check out Patreon. I love you all. And hope you guys have a great day. And I guess now I will end my turn. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop us a like so we know we are doing a good job. And you can also subscribe to MSD.TV for more fantastic videos by clicking on the button on the left. Don't forget to check out our partners at Imperium Duelist. They make really high quality mats, including some of my own limited edition release stuff. And if you want to check out one of our past videos, click here on the right. As always, don't forget to hold on to your MSD.TV and I'll see you next time.